So I'm thankful for Iti to give me this opportunity to talk here. I'm really grateful. And I see the irony about a man talking about women and mental health. Um, and yesterday one of my employees said, you know, uh, this sounds like mansplaining. And I, and I said, um, well, over the past 15 months, most of the people I talk to are emotionally distressed, happy women. And um, in the past two weeks, I've spoken to an IT employee whose husband is suicidal. Um, I spoke to a, um, a single mother with a nine-year-old daughter who was abused when she was young, was clinically depressed, um, so recently divorced, and she was self-medicating with alcohol. Finally reached a stage where she's turning up to work drunk, so she is on a sabbatical now, and hopefully in rehab. Uh, the last we spoke, she said, I am going to get help. Right, so, and there was this one person I remember who um, called me at midnight, and we spoke for a while, and then her father had died by suicide, she was suicidal, and um, I was just listening, emotionally being available, and a few months later, she spoke to me, and she you know, sent me a wedding card, and she said, well, thanks for being there when I needed you, please come to the wedding. So this has happened more than once, so I feel sufficiently, um, I think, equipped to be able to talk about women and mental health. I hope you all will give me a chance in, to listen, yeah? So, entrepreneurship is tough, and 90% of all um, startups will fail. Uh, in India, I, I think Shikha mentioned about, uh, you know, the falling rate of uh, women in the labor force, uh, the, the valid point. 14% of all entrepreneurs in India are Indian, uh, are women. And also, so the odds are stacked, stacked against you. And when I look around this room about you know women juggling so many roles and, and being entrepreneurs, I think it's fantastic. So, what can you do? So we we all know about the problem. So we're not going to get into that um, because I've seen it with my mother. When and in fact she worked through her life, and the the day that she died, she had made a meal for me of. Sari, fish curry, and chapatis. I still remember that, right? So, I know how tough it is. Um, so, what can we do? As, what can you do as women? So, there are three aspects. The first is self-care. Uh, the second is support from the community, your peers. And the third is seeking professional help when you need it. I'll talk about self-care. So, self-care is just like, you know, I woke up this morning and uh, you know, uh, you shower and you look at what you want to wear, um, you, you try and be presentable, all of you did the same, that's physically. But the same happens mentally, except that we can't see it. We don't have a mental floss to, to clean your everyday interactions. And every day that you meet people, every day that you interact with every, your environment, you're collecting things in your head. And the, what you refer to as emotional baggage, uh, but a lot of it is still there. So how do you clean that away? Um, if you have a self-care hygiene routine that you do on a daily basis, it's going to be helpful. And for those who have a self-care hygiene routine, and I, I'm trying to do the same for me and remind myself to do it every day, you will have higher productivity, you're going to be happier, you have sharper focus, you have a better mood control. Um, your relationships are going to be good, and whatever else that you want to achieve in life, whether it's um, you know travel the world, make money, being popular, getting awards, recognized, or, or just being happy with you know people that you love, um, can be achieved through this. Not doing it will result in stress, anxiety, possibly depression, um, substance abuse, and so on. Low energy, low motivation, and it starts really, really slowly, and then you know it moves on, and by the time there's a crisis, you realize um, that you, know, you haven't been taking care of yourself for a long time. And it happens that, especially uh, young women, what I've realized is that when, when you're in, in school, you're in college, um, there are all of these dreams and aspirations that, hey, I want to do better. If you, I, I was recently listening to somebody who said that when they go out to schools and colleges, the, the young uh, women, they speak a lot more and they have these dreams and these aspirations. And they slowly get chopped away, bit by bit, early marriage, and then, you know, you, you have to have kids, then you quit your job, you're happy, you're supposed to be happy. Yeah, 40% of all women um, suffer from postpartum depression, but no, you, 
you have to post those photos and Insta, you have to be happy. How can you not be happy? You've had a kid just now. <laughs> right? So post that, you, you quit your job, and the kids grow up, they go to school, you're all, all alone at home. And then you suddenly realize that everything that you want, your economic independence, your social identity, your friends have moved away, is slowly being stripped away and you're left with, you know, just yourself perhaps. And that is, that is tough. So it's really important about having this routine of self-care and also understanding the bumps on the road, right? So at every point in life, whether it's going to be from 15 to 20 or 20 to 30, uh, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, there are new challenges that emerge and sometimes they're completely new. Like I had a friend of mine, um, great job, was doing fantastically well. Her mother died and she wasn't even close to her mother and she went into this downward spiral of depression and grief, um, untreatable depression, finally had to give up a job and her, her life is not the same anymore. So we have to expect things that are going to happen to you, whether it's going to be uh, having a kid, losing a loved one, um, perhaps even growing old. <coughs> So how can you take care of yourself uh, in terms of self-care? So this is what I call your mental health uh, toolkit. And that's something that all of us can develop. So simple things about eating healthy, not skipping meals, getting your sleep on time, um, getting in touch with nature, taking a vacation, other things like learning how to forgive. These are not things that you learn every day, uh, but this goes a long way because the toxins in your, which stay with you if you don't forgive can really upset you. Just being aware of it is important. Uh, being grateful, gratitude can really lift you. If you have, if your mind and your heart is full of gratefulness, there is no space for you to be complaining. And if you're, if you're somebody who complains, um, you're actually, your mind gets altered almost permanently. People who complain. Practicing self-compassion. Um, I used to motivate myself by always beating myself up and saying, I'm a loser, why are you doing this? You suck, right? That was my way of motivating myself. It works for a little while. And then I read about self-compassion. It achieves the same results, um, but you're being kind to yourself. So by being kind to yourself, you're actually motivating yourself. You don't have to beat yourself up. And this is active self-compassion because we always forget. I, I go through, uh, uh, you know, during the nights especially, I kind of like look back at my day and I said, uh, and I tell myself, oh my God, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. You, you know, what, what's going on? And I beat myself up. And then I have to remind myself, no, be kind. You're doing okay. Also, just accepting. A lot of times what happens is that uh, we are, because we live in this social media frenzy, everything has to be perfect. Um, so we expect our lives not to be low. It's, it's fine to be low. It's okay not to be okay. And accepting that it's okay not to be okay will go a long way to actually deal with those negative self emotions. Also what we're talking about is that when we are kids, we don't learn about how to express our feelings. Um, so we don't have a vocabulary for emotions and feelings. So when we don't have a vocabulary, we don't express. When we don't express, we can't communicate. And when we don't communicate, the other person around can't, won't know what's going on. And we are not even aware that this is going on. So self-awareness, expression and so on. Oh, so one of the biggest things um, that work against depression and uh, in being suicidal is social connectedness. And I'm talking about social connectedness at a very deep level. I'm talking about not just uh, fair weather friends or Facebook friends. Who's, who's your 4 a.m. friend? Can you call somebody who's going to be non-judgmental? Um, if, you, if, you, if there's one thing you want to take away from this entire conversation, Social connectedness. Don't lose touch with your friends. And I think especially for women, when they get married, they, they move cities, uh, they lose touch, uh, their friends get married, they move, and so on. Important to find people that you can be with. So developing emotional resilience. Um, and that can be worked on. Just like hitting the gym, you can get your cardio rate up, you can also build muscle. Resilience can be built the same way. So when you actually uh, hit a bump on the road, you're able to bounce back. Um, other things, for me, um, I lost my mom when I was 19, uh, my father when I was 19, my best friend died when I was 24, by suicide my mom died when I was 25, I went through a divorce um, when I was 33, but all the time, um, my foundation was really my religion, um, so every time I fell down, I was like, oh, there's, some, there's a safety net, then I can bounce back, so find what it is, so if you want to be spiritual, you want to meditate, um, you know, you, you find whatever it is that that there is, you're gonna, you know, 
you might have a great life. Like I was talking about this friend of mine, everything is going fine, you know, your career is great, but there's just one hit, and if you're not ready for it, just like um, financially you build a bank balance, and if you ever have like an issue, you can always rely on that. You've got to build uh, mental, emotional uh, re resources for yourself as well as people who are going to be there when you're going through that tough time. And believe me when I tell you that it could just take one incident to knock you off that perch and you, life will never be the same again. So uh, you can find what you want to do. So, you know, I, I play football um, and uh, you, can, you can do what you want. There are many ways. So it's not necessary that you always go to a therapist or you go to, um, you know, you're going to, a, uh, you know, you're, going, you're on meds. You can find journaling. Uh, I have a friend of mine who does sound healing. There's uh, all kinds of therapy. Find what you want. Garden, get out. Find whatever you want to do. Um, so this friend of mine, she's been in the Fortune uh, Top 40 list twice. Uh, she, she's into a second biotech startup. And she runs. She just runs. So she's got a running community. She works really hard uh, on her uh, company. But she always finds time to run. So she runs marathons. Now she's running ultra marathons so find something whatever it is it's it, it's it could, so keep searching you will find what you want and it can be anything so um also build what i call sub communities you get out of your comfort zone so you, most of the time what we do we were with family uh, we, we go to work but find things that are beyond that where you can find sub communities what do i mean by sub communities maybe you're collecting stamps or all you'll do is uh, take photos of birds. I, I don't know, there are people in Bangalore especially you can do a lot more because the, whatever interests you have, you will always find your tribe. Right, now the second part, self-care, support from peers. So you take care of yourself and you build this into your routine as a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly thing and it becomes part of who you are. So I, uh, I have hereditary gum disease and I, you know, I, after a lot of like gum surgery, now I brush twice a day, I floss, and so on and so forth. So the same thing. Mentally, you can do that. It becomes habitual. Then you don't have to even think about it. You're just doing it. Support from peers is very, very important. I have a mental... Uh, so I was part of this um, mental health safe space where we go. And we just talk about what is going on. And for the first time when I went there, and everybody just said, you know, I suffer from social anxiety. Um, and I, I know I'm clinically depressed. Or I lost somebody. And I've just had a romantic breakup. For the first time, people, so there are rules. The rules are that um, what is spoken in that room will not go out of that room, and you're not going to judge, and you're not going to offer solutions, but you will listen. That's the whole point, and active listening. So this is called a safe space community for mental health, and you can create that within your own companies or wherever else that you are, and have those rules, and everybody respects those rules. And now there's a WhatsApp group that whenever people will ping at whatever time and saying, I'm feeling low, or this happened to me, I'm feeling suicide. Uh, what do I do? So, I have that as well. So you can also create it, but you know, if, if you want help creating that, um, Iti can share my details and we can help you with that. Find that. Also find your mental health tribe because you can't talk about everything to everybody. Because most of the time, you're if we all want to come across as as you know as confident go-getters, which is which is what we want to do, but at the same time, allowing ourselves to be vulnerable. I constantly put out stuff on Facebook saying, you know. Uh, we were being pre-incubated at IIM Bangalore, I didn't get through, I went into a funk for like 40 days and I posted that and I said, I've spent three months trying to get into this, it's not worked out, I, I feel really shitty about it and I just, I just spoke about it and I had an outpouring of people just talking to me and one of the best ways to make friends is showing your vulnerability, it's especially over 30, it's very difficult to make friends over 30 or 40 but if you want to make friends instantly, just show them your vulnerability. This is how I'm feeling. I've had a bad day, and uh, you know, because most of the time we just we, we share stuff which is always positive and joyful. Our trips, our food, and so on. Uh, just showing your honorable side can make you friends immediately. Try and find people with the same lived experience as you. We did a focus group discussion for people who've lost a loved one to suicide, and this group was everybody in that room had lost a loved one. There was a mother who lost her daughter because her daughter was being bullied for being too dark, and then there was this. Uh, young girl who lost a cousin's sister uh, who's been bullied in school, right? And for the first time, everybody felt they could open up and they did and the amount of emotions in that room was just insane. So, whatever it is that you're going through. So, my brother-in-law is on 
a wheelchair. Um, he, uh, you know, and he's, you know, he hasn't studied much and so on and so forth, but he decided uh, to go and do what he wanted to. So he, he's a Paralympian, he plays wheelchair tennis, um, and, you know, he got the Padma Shri, right? So, he, he, and that's because you find support for people with the same lived experience. Because my sister, her, be her best friend, um, you know, uh, is physically challenged, so she was able to relate to it. So, it's important that whatever it is that you're feeling, most of the time people who are going through stress, anxiety, depression, and there are many other things that you feel all alone. But the moment you feel, find somebody who understands what you're saying, you're, you're like, wow, like I went to the safe space community, everybody's talking the same language. I was nearly in tears and I said, oh my God, I don't have to feel scared about talking, right? So I, 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 I suffer from social anxiety. I really can't like deal with a lot of people. Uh, I just get hyper-stimulated, like a lot of people, and I, I, I lose like energy, and I go back home, and I'm completely depleted. Um, but you know, just talking about it helps. Great. So self-care, support from peers, and then finally seeking help. A, a lot of times, we are not aware about what's really going on. I had an intern, and uh, she had a friend who was suicidal, uh, and the friend thought she was suicidal because she broken up with her boyfriend. And then I, she kept saying she's suicidal. And then I said, I, your friend needs a psych, psychiatric evaluation to determine what's really happening. Uh, finally, she went to the psychiatrist and they found out that she suffers from something called premenstrual dysphoric disorder. A lot of women go through these uh, symptoms where just before their periods, they're feeling really, really low. But for some women, it becomes uh, depression and some of them are actually suicidal. Um, she wasn't aware, she's on meds, she's much better. Another friend of mine, actually I've got about three or, friend, uh, three or four friends who um, who have endometriosis and one of them had reached such a stage that she had to quit a job and she was feeling um, suicidal and hostile towards her loved ones. So finally, uh, when she got the diagnosis, I mean she, all, she knew but nobody knew that this is the reason why all of this is happening, that your world is completely falling apart. So uh, after the diagnosis, got the treatment, it's feeling better, back to work, driving again. So, there are conditions and there are all kinds of conditions we are not aware of. Sometimes you may not be able to see it. If somebody mentions to you that this is happening, uh, take note and, 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 and try and seek help because you can't take care of yourself all alone. Also, find a vocabulary to talk about what's really gone on in your life uh, because it's important to do that and do it in a way where it, it's, it's also help seeking but it's not necessarily about, and you're talking to the right people because sometimes you may open your mouth and say this is what's going on and the other person might not respond the way you want them to. It's fine, find somebody else. You will always find somebody. So now I talk about uh, my own mental health and other things on Facebook. So I have people constantly reaching out to me. Friends, friends of mine who I've known for a really long time suddenly reach out and say, did you know I'm a suicide survivor? Did you know I made an attempt to die? And I survived and I want to talk about this. And these are serious issues. So this doesn't get spoken about. It's stigmatized. Uh, it's in the, it, it, but the point is, all of you today, even if, if, you, if you want to talk about mental health, we can help you find a vocabulary, we can find you spaces to talk about, um, and we can find, help you find your tribe, and these safe spaces that you feel like what you're speaking about um, will get heard. Thank you very much.